stuff. Today is 5th of September 2019 and this is a 15 years old male neuter golden retriever. Okay. This is day one, one. Okay. of impatient. Okay. What happened was... Two days ago. Two days ago, okay. The owner sent a photo, right? Yeah. Of this golden retriever. What was complained? A big swelling, right? A big swelling on the lower, right lower armpit. Right lower armpit, yeah. You can, you can see his, his palm of his hand. It says long has finger in it. The big swelling, huh? Mm. Okay, there's the right side, right? Okay, now, right side. now it's how many days later? Two days later. Okay, we see the swelling. Any swelling? Yeah. The swelling has gone down, right? Yeah. Gone down. What was given? Any lasix or anything? We give uh, antibiotics mm. and then anti-inflammatory. Anti -inflammatory. And we the also patch. put the fentanyl patch on the body. To how many days ago? Two days ago. Fentanyl patch is five days ago. Five days ago, huh? okay. So, but you can see the swelling is still there on the armpit and, and on the whole limb, right? The right limb just point, uh, this yeah. whole thing. The whole leg is swollen and then also... The, the, uh, the armpit and, and the chest area less swollen, right? Yeah, less swollen. Okay, how about the left side? The left... Left side no swelling. Left armpit and left... Left uh, paw? Left paw is a bit swollen, but the MP is not swollen. Mm, the left limb, the limb, the left leg? From the paw to the elbow, is it swollen? A bit. A bit swollen, okay. So there's one, and then now we look at the back first, the back leg. The left one first, or the right one first, right one is it swollen? Right one is swollen. The yeah, right one is swollen. definitely swollen, the paw edema, okay. Oops. And the limb, limb edema, okay. The, the left, left high? Left high, a Not bit. Not so, a bit, bit swollen, huh? So mainly it's on the right hand side, I would say, yeah. right hand side. Right hand side is more swollen. Okay, and the co owner complained of vomiting for how many days? Every day actually, for, for four days. days, about, days uh, four days. About four days, okay, then dog's not eating. Check, check the gums and see. Is it dry? Dehydrated? Check any... Uh, is, it, is it dry? One, not dry. Not dry. Not dry, but a bit dehydrated. He had, he had two bottles of uh, IV drip yesterday. Uh. Three bottles. Three bottles, huh? Okay, so it's still not able to stand up. Okay, what about the urine? Show the urine the bottle. So okay, we put the catheter in because we noticed that the owner complained that the dog did not pass urine. Put put, put near uh, down there. Did not pass urine, and uh, this is very unusual because we gave three bottles of IV drip. And we did the catheterization. As you can see, the urine is really cloudy. What what is the dipstick test? What does it show? The dipstick? Shows high increase in glucose ice. It's only one enough. Right? Leukocytes, huh? And red blood cells, right? Yeah. And then the bilirubin positive. Bilirubin, huh? Mm. How about the... Let's see, how about the... Protein also. SG? SG also. Specific gravity is 1.060. Very high. Blood plus plus 50. Mm. P eight x six protein plus plus hundred leukocyte plus 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 five hundred. That means there's a cystitis here. Glucose is negative, ketones negative. Okay. Nitrites negative. Okay, so the main thing is that there is a urinary tract infection. Okay, and the blood test shows the uh, high urea, serum urea, and what? And creatinine. And high white cell count. White cell count. Okay, yeah, then we try to take away first. So now any urine coming out? Just check. No urine. So this is a very strange case, even though we give drip, huh? and this is the fourth bottle in the last two days, huh? and still there's no urine coming out. The dog at least is able to stand up a bit this morning when I went to the house. The dog had an x-ray, x-ray didn't show any urinary stones but uh, it does show cloudy urine. Okay, let's see the, the important thing on it. Yeah. Okay, the urea, how, how, how much is it? 46.2. The normal one? Until 6.3. Okay. Not more per liter. But the creatinine? Creatinine is high. 650. The maximum is 177. Really? You should put it down so that because it can't focus. No, it can't focus. You hold it, it can't focus. Yeah. 
Okay, now you can focus. Okay. Now nah, very good. Now okay. So this shows that there is a acute renal failure. Liver is okay. Liver is okay. Four are in normal range. Glucose. Glucose also normal. Four point four. Let's see the hematology. The leukocytes. Let's see. Total point seven is high. How many? 31.2 Normal should be 6.0 to 17 percent mm, So it's leukocytosis neutrophilia 76.8 percent mm. So it's also high The monocytes Also high 13.0 should be mm. 3 to 10 percent Now it's most likely this dog because he sleeps with the owners upstairs huh? So he doesn't go to the the, the bathroom until over over several hours and according to the owner only once in two weeks will he pee inside the the bedroom because the owner wanted him to sleep with them upstairs so this dog is very clean so over the years he controlled his bladder until until the urine becomes infected and that would be the reason for the for the acute renal failure now. Okay, we do a leptospirosis test. How is it? So it's positive? negative. This one is the control. control. So it's negative. Yeah. So we, we check for leptospirosis, but in negative, so it's not likely to be the kidney kidney uh, acute kidney failure due to leptospirosis. Okay. So most most likely cause is. Toxins, huh? either from the bladder, stagnant, stagnant uh, urine because the dog doesn't urinate inside the bedroom for long hours unless he's downstairs but he sleeps upstairs so he doesn't urinate from uh, night to, to the next day and so he's a very clean dog. Then the other one? Eh? The other possibility is what is he sleeps under the car. No, he sleeps under the car. He's uh, half the body in front, half of the, no. Uh, he goes under the car, and uh, he, he hides his half body under the car. That is his habit. Huh? Now injury will be, will be explained by the right hand side. Okay, show the the armpit there, and the swelling there. No further down uh, down there, but no more really. Right? Can you feel it? Where is your needle to check? Can we aspirate? Any, uh, you press the swelling and aspirate any uh, okay. hematoma? No, you must like, like the owner, you press it. Come get the, where's it? Press it hard and then, then, uh, then, just we try to aspirate and see very hard, very hard, like what the owner did like that. No, you, see, you saw the owner? Press both sides, uh. both sides, until until very hard. Uh, further down, further down. Uh. Okay, we aspirate and see. Is there any blood? I suspect it's a hematoma, because when he come up from the car, he he has burst his blood vessel. Is it true? Huh? Now this this hematoma might be infected. So is there any blood? A bit. No, because you, you you're supposed to go further down. Okay, the down below normally uh it's too high up, but they, they show some, how much is it, a little bit, a lot. The, when you aspirate, always aspirate the lowest part. Okay, take it out and then, and then aspirate from the lowest end. Yeah. Let the blood come out. No? They, he was very uncomfortable early on because there was a big bleeding uh, hematoma. Press it so that all the blood comes out through that. Uh, press some more. This to prevent any infection, a uh, bacteria going into the swelling. Uh. Ah, just press it. As you can see, there is a very bad hematoma, but of course it's about one third the size now compared to how many days ago? Four days ago, right? Two days ago. Two days ago, yeah. And so this confirms my my uh, hypothesis that the dog slept under the front half, the f uh, under the car with his body, front part of his body, 
under the car for some reason. This is his bad habit. And then either the owner called him and then suddenly he came out and overstretched his right armpit. At the same time, when he overstretched, there are some blood vessels there and the blood vessel really ruptured. In fact, in the x-ray, it looks like there's some line of uh, blood vessels. And you can see, you see, a lot of blood. So we aspirate it to prevent any abscess formation. That's good. Now, Rina, you follow me to go and see the x-ray, come. Let's go and see the x-ray to complete the case, yeah. Come in first. The x-ray is on the, on the computer. Now, you just hold this. You hold this. I will explain the x-ray, come, come here. So, now I did the x-ray study. Okay. Now, this one, wait for me. Can, can you focus? Can up. Okay. This shows, this is the right armpit area, and the, you can see this really swollen. This side we, had, we we did hematoma. You can see here, there you see. Mm. Now normally we don't see this, you know. I don't know why it's this. Huh? Uh, this could be shoulder blade. But anyway, this part is swollen. You can see it's really swollen. Huh? It shouldn't be swollen in the first place. So other than that, of course this one is not taken properly, so there's not a. I can't tell whether the heart is large or not because there's a curve here so the dog was not pro properly positioned okay now you see the other one I save this first save it in this folder definitely you can you, you can focus huh? okay can oh, five seven okay this is the one Okay, now I open the other one. Now you can see there is an urea, not much urine, although we gave the drips last yesterday, three bottles. Mm. According to the owner, the, there was no urine being passed out. And, and, and uh, this is surprising, uh, surprising, but uh, this, this acute kidney failure due to the sesame on the blood test, uh, acute renal failure leukocytosis and urea we give at least 1,500 yes, ml of drips still there's no urine mm. uh, urine was cloudy so you can see actually there is a small distended bladder there's some urine but not much uh, maybe the dog is very dehydrated so the urine was uh, less urine formed so let's save this file first. 56G, okay, 56G. 56, let's save this one. Now let's see the other one. The next one. Okay, now, this lateral view of the abdomen, you can see that really, the bladder is very small. Normally it should be bigger than that. If there's urine from 1,500 ml of uh, of drips yesterday eh? and overnight there should be there should be the uh, bladder should be hmm? full dog the yeah, bladder should be full and the owner should complain that the floor is wet uh, the floor is wet but uh, I went to the house today the, the dog was recumbent this morning and there was no no urine on the floor but then the owner conf confirmed that uh, there was no urine passed. So this shows that uh, there's something wrong with the kidneys. Unless there's some traumatic injury to the kidneys. Uh, so I shall save this file to give it to the owner. This is the next one you see is the last one. Okay, this is the view of the chest. And uh, the chest we, we can't see anything much, but uh, you can see that the you can see the armpit swelling. Let's see. Okay, now there's this swelling here, the right. 
actually also shows it's, it's actually it's a hematoma. Hematoma will put down because we aspirated the traumatic injury in a hematoma. Hematoma, okay. Right armpit area, right side. Now, whether this is related to the kidney failure or it's just just a uh, coincidence, uh, right armpit area. So then, okay. So we shall conclude this uh, this case study that the the original complaint was actually the swelling in the right armpit area and the and the chest. And after that, the dog went home with the painkiller, the patch, fentanyl patch, and then the next day or two, the complaint was vomiting. So from this vomiting. We did a blood test and that's how we discovered the acute renal failure. So now the dog is being treated for acute renal failure. Today is day one. Okay, finish. Thanks.